city. So um, what is hydroelasticity? So we know that aeroelasticity is air-induced deformation behavior of you know, structures like airplane. If you fly quite fast in, in the sky and then the air would do, induce it to bend a little bit, such as the winds. So hydroelasticity is liquid-induced deformation. Um, normally it's auto-induced. Auto um, you see this um, graph from J JFM 2019. Um, if you have a floating body on the sea surface, when the sea is static, the body is static. But if you have some wave come, like when the wave um, crest is calm, it moves upward. If it is elastic body, then the structure can change. The same when the wave um, song is coming. So this can be very serious. Um, in 2013, there was an accident about the container ship. You see, when the wave come, the ship break up into two parts in the middle because of this hydroelastic behavior. The ship broke and then um, it's just the thing. So, um, you know, cost a lot of money and the uh, cargo. So it's a uh, um, very serious problem and the research has been um, focused to do uh, solve those um, problems. So state of the art, um, there are a lot of FSI simulations um, are available nowadays, but most of them are, are, are focused on one-way coupling or wake to way coupling. So for example, on this uh, left-hand side, we can see a ship advancing in waves. Uh, you know, safety doesn't solve um, structure behavior. So uh, normally the structure is assumed as rigid body. So under safety simulation, you can get the pressure and risk cost force on the ship. And then you pass the ship to a structure solver such as uh, FEA, Philip Element Analysis. And you can get its deformation based on the force. Um, this is one-way coupling. And what is weak two-way coupling? So if you pass this um, structure behavior back to your fluid, because when your structure changed, the fluid should also change because it uh, attached on the structure. So if you pass back the structure behavior to the fluid, the mesh should also change. So this is called two-way coupling. But uh, what is weak called two-way coupling? Uh, once you pass back to the um, solution, the solution will be different from when you didn't pass back. And uh, this bring a deviation. If you just do it once, it doesn't really couple together or not couple very firmly. So the, there will be some, um, you know, errors or duration uh, in this coupling process. It could be ignored if the deformation is uh, small or the fluid um, solution is not important. But when the fluid, when the deformation is um, larger and uh, you want to also understand what's happening in the fluid when the structure is deforming, then a strongly coupled um, hydroelastic uh, method is uh, required. And which means when your structure is moving, the fluid domain is completely moved together with the structure. So this is the focus of um, today's presentation. And some examples of application will also be introduced. So I would like to introduce first of all, why I start to think about this problem. Um, this graph is a satellite image of the Arctic. Um, on the right hand side, you can see back, back in 1978, the Arctic sea ice coverage stretched to the whole coastline, which means it, um, there's low open water and uh, almost whole year long, you couldn't uh, do such as sh ship operation in those places. But uh, until 2010, the ice already reduced uh, to the red um, part and it uh, created a lot of open open water space. And it's it's very scary because the global warming and then um, if we don't understand this, if we don't solve this, and it's gonna be a big problem for our planet. So that's a motivation of my PhD to look into sea ice. So why, how is hydroelasticity important here? Once we have this open ocean created, um, when we have winds, the wind will generate ocean, ocean to have waves. So there's already a lot of introduction in today's previous presentation about waves, 
But imagine when the wave approached the ice, the ice is very thin. So the wave will induce ice to break up. So this problem um, give us the challenge to understand how the ice behave when the wave are coming and how it would break up. And uh, if we can simulate this, we, need, we would be able to understand uh, how this break up and uh, how the ice extents will reduce when the wave is coming. Then we will be able to predict the Arctic environment and the, the extent of the ice coverage. Um, this is uh, very closely linked with global warming because when the ice coverage is smaller, it reflects less sun ray. To make it more clear, if sun, com sun ray comes from the um, sky, open water can reflect only 10% or less than 10% of energy, but the ice can reflect roughly 90% of energy. So when we have the ice coverage, it's kind of the protection for us from global warming. But when ice is reduced, the reflection is reduced, and then you away absorb more solar energy from the sun, and the global warming problem become more and more serious. Um, so to check this um, cleaner, I would like to share some experiment video about how the ice will deform when the ocean wave is coming. This is an experiment performed in Arto University of Finland. You can see the wave generates and the ice is actually moving up and down with the wave. You can see the wave goes inside the ice and makes the ice become like a wave shape and then it moves together. So the ice is deforming. Make it more, make the wave's condition to be more strong. You can see the eyes start to break into pieces, segments. And you may observe that each of the segments are almost equally wide. So there is a sort of function collect with the breaking up with the ice and the ocean waves. This is a photo of where I was there, <laughs> just for fun. And for more detail of the experiments, you can check this OMAE paper. Um, so as we saw in the in the um in the video, um experiment video, there should be sort of um function co collect between the sea ice hydroelasticity and the ocean waves. If we can link the function with our weather system, we will be able to predict how the ice coverage will change. And uh, this is uh, also important for us to understand and mitigate global warming. However, um, if we use safety to simulate this case, the 6DLF, um, 6DLF case will only be able to assume the ice as rigid body, such as I shown in this video published um, in 2019. So this is a lot difficult when you have ocean wave comes. Um, the ice can float in under ocean wave and have six DLF motions. And if you have over set mass, you can model its drift, um, no problem. But this only valid when the ice is small. So when the ice become larger and uh, it's thin, it will have break up when ocean wave is coming. So apparently current method or previous method couldn't solve this um, new problem and we needed to develop a new method for it. So this comes to my um, motivation to develop a hydroelectric open form solver. And this work was done in um, Hakan's course um, in Chalmers University of Technology. And uh, I got um, a lot of help from the, um, my classmates and Hakan, um, including Min Hao. Um, so this idea is to, first of all, uh, have, a, oh, have a single phase FSI method. So have a sing, um, 
one like this is an elastic beam, it's uh, attached on the C bed, and this uh, flow is a single phase flow. It coming and then can make this um, device deform. And second one is to enable fluid surface modeling. So we um, split this um, this fluid into two phases, and then we still have a water flow, and then the device still should uh, um, deform with the water flow. The third one is to enable wave modeling. Um, then the wave, uh, when the wave approaching the device, it should still deform. And uh, why this is really important um, to be strongly to a coupling because when the ice um, change, um, we need to understand how the wave change together with ice deformation because the wave energy will keep going. And if we ignore the ice deformation, the result would not be accurate and we cannot um, further predict um, the wave ice interaction. So this um, needed to be coupled and fully coupled because ice deformation is large and nonlinear. Um, fortunately, we have um, we have uh, before FSI form uh, was de developed by Professor Tukovic. Um, and if, I, I'm sure if you search FS form, you can find a lot of information. Um, however, it was only available for the um, salary one, so single flow. So my job is to uh, stitch those solver together, FSI form, interform, wave to form, and to make a new solver called wave FS form to do the job. Uh, the code has been published and it's available on Hakan's website um, since uh, 2018. And I, um, some researchers have already been test the code and ref, um, report that uh, um, there's the, the uh, promise accuracy so far. And uh, um, my further step is trying to um, also move from FSI form to um, Sonics for form, uh, form. I already discussed with um, Philip that um, because um, he's quite act actively um, developing um, Sonics for form and uh, the Sonic for form has advanced the Sonic mechanics scheme. So the, um, there can be complex material um, prepared uh, properties uh, in the device and uh, you can still copy it in this uh, wave FS problem. So I would have a share one single example of using the developed solver. Um, the video is quite straightforward. You can see here, this is a case when um, we have a coaster defense near the uh, um, coastline and uh, when the wave is coming, um, the, the device um, could deform with the wave uh, apparently, um, the deformation may be small or large. Um, this video is just to, to see how the solver work. And we can uh, use this to assess many different things because you see the one message stress can be new inside the uh, device when the wave is coming. So um, we can do a lot of things. We can, even the deformation is not very big, but the stress can still help us to do fatigue assessment. And uh, also we could model in breaking wave like pre uh, presented by a um, pair and uh, use the breaking wave to induce uh, some larger, more, also more significant deformation of the device. But this is a, a single example. Now we are moving back to the sea ice case. After um, having this solver, now we have wave coming from left-hand side and uh, we can successfully model the deformation of the ice uh, when the wave uh, is approaching and uh, it's fully coupled with the, with the incoming wave. Um, you may ask one question. Um, the ice is not um, a break uh, in this simulation. Uh, can it be simulated? Um, it cannot be simulated to have this ice, ice um, break up straight away. At least not yet. But remember we have um, already um, show that uh, the one misses stress can be plot inside the ice, which means we understand the ice material and we can compare the stress with the, um, its breaking, create, um, breaking cellular stuff, which means um, if you see a stress larger than the critical value, you can predict this ice to be break and uh, to be break, breaking up. And uh, as seen in the experiment, um, there seems to be a relationship that the break eye segments are equally large. So if we can um, use the stress to compare against the critical value, it can kind of give a, 
um, relatively nice uh, prediction about the CS hydro, uh, hydroelectricity happens in real life. Um, so I would like to give a little bit more details how this works. Um, so to do this fluid structure interaction, strongly two way coupling. Um, first of all, we need to divide the mesh into two parts, fluid part and uh, strongly part. In traditional, like say, say 6DOF um, solver, we don't really have the solid mesh. So the solid mesh is actually empty and you, we only solve the fluid mesh and put the force on the, on the solid. But when, if we want to solve the deformation, the, the mesh of the solid should also be uh, accounted for and then calculated. So the step is, uh, um, is like this. We first of all solve the fluid solver obtain the pressure and velocity field inside the fluid domain. And uh, this is a lot difficult um, and uh, have already been um, maturely developed. And then we pass this fluid force and the solid boundary to the solid. And then the so solid domain and then the solid solver can solve the deformation from the force of the fluid. And then after this solid solver is um, solved, the solid will deform and then it will update the shape of solid and then this should be passed back to change the fluid mesh as well. And after we change the mesh, they will be different from the change mesh and the original mesh and uh, this will, we call it uh, residual. Um, in weak coupling, uh, FSI, the residual can be ignored, but in this case, we want to strong coupling. So we need to go to many iterations. The method is to do in the relaxation method, which is to, um, if we have a religion and we make it smaller, not uh, if the if the deformation between um uh, if the difference between the fluid mesh and solid mesh is bigger than what we want, we need to re relax it and uh, then go back to do this again. Um, in the CI's case, we need to do this around forty times to make it fu fully coupled, uh, which means the computational cost of this case is roughly forty times or a little bit even more than a normal rigid body case. Some reference can be seen in Professor Tukowitz's paper, Philip's paper, and the one of my paper um, published in recent years. So um, having seen that the, the two-way strongly coupled um, FSMS method can be solved some climate and uh, nature problems, we also wonder how, how it works with the engineering problems. So um, this, this project I'm, I'm going to introduce is uh, actually an initiative by Pear, um, who gave the presentation earlier. Um, this is uh, a kind of breakwater under sea. You can see um, it's called submerged horizontal plate breakwater. And this um, breakwater is installed on the sea surface, but it's very thin. It has four corners fixed, but it's a plate slightly under the water surface. And the purpose of this device is to, when you have incoming water from the left hand side, you want to, to be dumped off to as small as possible to avoid the wave to um, do damage to our human facilities. So um, this device um, has been shown to be quite cheap and uh, um, have later environment effect. So it's very interesting if we can de de um, optimize the design of this device and apply it to um, more, more in our real life. So this is where we can use this um, new solver come to place. This is an example when the, the uh, material is assumed to be rigid. And you can say it doesn't deform with the uh, um, wave coming. But uh, you, you see the, uh, it's, if the four color of the device is fixed, it doesn't have the freedom of degree. So it could have this elastic deformation along with the wave. So this elastic material um, used in this um, case is like a ruber. And when you have ruber and the way can, uh, you can see the device will have large nonlinear deformation along with the uh, wave. And the wave profile will change uh, when the device is deforming. And this is quite interesting because when the deforming, the wave profile changes and the, uh, we want to understand the, uh, the damped wave. So this is also um, a case that it's essential to use strongly fluid structure interaction. 
So having performed the case, we have already seen some really interesting results. Um, the left-hand side, uh, the first figure, you can say the um, x-axis is time and y-axis the fluid surface elevation. We measure the downstream. And you can say when you use, when we use rigid body device, the um, dumped wave is significantly larger than we use the um, elastic device. In other words, if we can de design the elastic device um, and apply it, the dumped wave will be like as half smaller as when you use uh, when we use a rigid device. And this is very significant engineering funding because it could uh, um, improve the current design a lot. And the second figure is uh, an extensive test. So X axis we test uh, this um, this device in different wave period condition. And uh, the T is the transmission coefficient is how much wave can be uh, passed uh, downstream. So the T is smaller, the better the performance of the structure is. And you can see for all the tested wave period, the transmitted wave is almost uh, half reduced when we apply the elastic device. So this is really interesting and uh, a uh, nice uh, finding. We are quite excited to share it. Um, and uh, moving furthermore, so if we have an elastic device, can we design the elastic device to optimize wave damping performance? The answer is yes. Um, in the third picture, the X axis, you can see it's the amplitude of the device deformation um, against the, the amplitude of the in incident wave. So um, it's like a dimensional um, device deformation amplitude. And the y-axis is the amount of wave energy uh, can be passed uh, downstream compared with the incident wave energy. And uh, you can see that we, if we just uh, change a little bit of the elasticity of the rubber material, the, the wave energy will also change a lot. And uh, the interesting point happened at the point uh, when the device move at the almost same um, amplitude as the wave amplitude, which is when x axis equals to one, and uh, its kind of uh, resonance uh, behavior appeared, and the wave energy reduced to be less than ten percent of the instant wave. So, if we could use the new developed software to design. Um, really design this hydroelastic device, which can make um, um, significant interest and uh, probably improved a lot of our current SHPB applications. Um, that's uh, two examples, one is in science and one is in um, engineering. Um, to close my presentation, I would like to share one video and this um this video is also um links with global warming as i i work a lot in this field i understand that it's very important to um produce new and renewable uh, wave energy so this is a kind of wave energy devices um under sea i hope the video works if not please let me know the Anaconda Wave Energy Converter uses an entirely new principle to convert the energy from long ocean waves into electrical power. The machine is moored at the bow and can swing so that it will remain head to sea. The bulge tube is completely filled with seawater under low pressure. As the sea wave passes along the tube, a bulge wave is excited, which moves in front of the wave crest. Energy is captured continuously from the sea wave in the region of the bulge and diffraction replaces this energy as the wave progresses. At the stern of the tube, the power takeoff receives the bulge wave as large pulses of water and smooths the flow before passing through a turbine generator. It is then drawn back into the tube during the reduced pressure phase of the bulge cycle. Anaconda wave energy converters will be grouped into farms of 20 or more machines producing over 20 megawatts. Each installation will have a minimal environmental impact, being situated beneath the surface in deep water, well offshore.
Um, this device is really interesting because um, it's really easy to install and it's uh, really cheap. I saw the, um, the research shows that to install um, this device to make the same um, power of the traditional wave energy device that can save like uh, the cost of one traditional energy device can make 16 of this um, device and uh, it uh, it doesn't. Uh, it has minimal environment effect because it's uh, um, not that easy to install um, weightless devices uh, offshore. But this one, you see, you just uh, need uh, um, um, some stick to fix it and then put the uh, elastic part inside. Um, so I think this is an example to inspire all of us for some few ap for future applications of the um, hydroelastic method. And this um, design of this device is also extremely hard um, because of the complex physics, but uh, um, it seems to be feasible with the newly developed solar. And thank you very much. Um, that's all of my presentation and I will be happy to take some questions. <laughs>